We're going. Okay, so here's one right here. Okay, uh, now something weird is about to happen. You guys ready for this? No. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, so this is what is weird. Okay, check this out. So I'm going to work with this guy, then I'll talk about negative infinity, and I also got to talk about this negative infinity because I didn't do that last time, but we, we can in a second. So when I um, do this one, I got to write the limit. Don't forget to write the limit. You have to write this guy. It's annoying, I know. And on the top, I am going to take out um, the highest degree inside here. So I'm going to go square root of 9x squared. And then uh, I'm going to write inside this square root what I get when I do that. Uh, see, what is 9x squared divided by 9x squared? It is 1. What is 2 divided by 9x squared? That is uh, 2 over 9x squared. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to factor out an x. <laughs> why are you doing that? Why did, uh, why did I factor out an x? Because I want this. Uh, I need to have a, a, an x on the denominator, and also um, I know that when I simplify x squared, I'll be able to cancel that x out. Remember how, like, when you do you, uh, limits, um, if it doesn't work when you plug in a number, then you uh, factor and simplify, or you do uh, the conjugate and simplify. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do something so we can simplify. And here we are actually factoring. Because if you plug in infinity to these right now, uh, it doesn't work. Because this number gets infinitely big and this number gets infinitely big. I, I, don't, I get infinity over infinity. I, I, that, that's an indeterminate form, right? So I'm factoring stuff out. And then cool stuff happens. You see this infinity right here? When infinity goes into this right here, this number, this number goes to zero. This goes to zero as this approaches infinity because when you go to infinity on the denominator, the whole number approaches zero. Okay, this guy right here, he also approaches zero. So they're essentially gone. And on, uh, let me rewrite what I got now. So we got the limit as x approaches infinity. Now on the top, I'm going to have the square root of 9x squared, and it's multiplying times the square root of 1, which we don't need, right? We don't need to write him because he doesn't do anything. And then on the bottom, I have x multiplied by the square root of 2. No, not the square root of 2, uh, just 2, right? Because this guy canceled out, right? Okay, now this is where tricky stuff happens. <clears throat> this inside here has to be positive, right? Because we're square rooting. Like, we're inside of a square root, so it has to be positive. So, um, the square root of 9 is 3. What is the square root of x squared? It is x. Now, this is the weird part, guys. That x has to have absolute value bars. Because, because if I... Did you just call my grandma out? <laughs> I, I just said x has to have absolute value bars, and he goes, oh, your grandma. <laughs> okay. So, we have... We have an x that has a, a, an odd exponent. See, look, look at before. Before we had, you see this one had an even exponent? It didn't matter what we plugged in the x because it would always be positive, right? Now we have an odd exponent. It has an exponent of 1. If I plug a negative number in there, this would be negative, which is not allowed because inside of this, we can't have negatives. Does that make sense? So that's why we have to put these absolute value bars on there. Okay, now that, that kind of makes things a little weird because um, there's something special about this function right here. There's something special about him. He looks kind of weird. He kind of looks like this. Some of you guys have seen him before. Um, you see, like, as we approach infinity on this guy, he's going to 1. As we approach negative infinity on this guy, he's going to negative 1. So it changes things. That's when, that's when the infinities matter here. Up here, it doesn't matter because we don't have the absolute value thing. So what do you guys think the answer to this guy is? It's 3, just like this one. It's exactly the same. Okay, this one, not, not true. Okay, let me finish this answer though, uh, really quick. So now we have, now we have uh, something special happening inside of this limit. We have this limit. I'm gonna split some things up so we can easily see it. We have the absolute value of x over x times three over two. Do you guys see the three and the two? Yeah. Okay. Now the limit of this as we approach infinity is just three over two. The limit of this as we approach infinity is what? It's one. So, 
The answer is three over two. Okay, but what if what if we go to the bottom one and we were approaching negative infinity and we have the absolute value of x over x times three over two? What is the absolute value of infinity or what is the absolute value of x over x as we approach negative infinity? Where is that my graph? Right here. What is it? It's a negative one. So we have negative one. And then what is this function gonna give us as we approach negative infinity? Just three over two, because it's a constant function. And so our answer for this one is negative three over two. So when you have an odd result after taking a square root, you have to have this absolute value thing, and then it changes the answer depending on which infinity you are approaching.